Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. Whilst we have spent a great deal of time on this channel, looking at some of the most important beat em ups ever made, today is the first time I have dedicated a video to the Double Dragon series, a franchise that arguably shaped the beat em up genre further than any other. In this video we are going to discuss Bimmy and Jimmy's first adventure, its overall impact on gaming culture and how this groundbreaking title came into existence in the first place. What is it that is so damn special about this game and the reasons as to why everyone has heard of it whether they have played it or not. This ladies and gentlemen is the mad story of Double Dragon, a game that defined the genre. Yeah. Sega Streets of Rage, Capcom's Final Fight and Konami's Turtles games are amongst the many great beat em up franchises we have looked at on this channel, but many of the tropes shared across all of these games all appeared in Double Dragon before them. The original Double Dragon developed by Technos Japan back in 1987 established many of the conventions we associate with all the beat em ups biggest hitters of the 90s key elements we think of when these brawlers come to mind. Whilst Double Dragon was unique on its release though, that does not mean that key elements weren't taken from elsewhere that would contribute to the creation of this unique blend. So let's discuss how Double Dragon itself came to be. As mentioned recently on this channel, Technos Japan were one of the forerunners in creating video games that included hand to hand combat. Examples of this include the likes of Karate Champ and Tag Team Wrestling, two 1984 games for company created that were far more impressive than the likes of Boxing that was published by Atari four years earlier. Later that same year though, a small company known as Nintendo would come up with a further game that would be a step closer to the beat em up genre we know and love, the game known as Urban Champion which would take combat to the streets for the first time, establishing street fighting in video games. Just one month later though, whilst working at IREM, the man who would go on to develop the first Street Fighter game, Takashi Nishiyama, would develop Kung Fu Master. Due to the fact that this game contains both fighting and side-scrolling, many consider this title to be the world's first beat-em-up. The game's story follows your character sprite known as Thomas, who is on a mission to rescue his girlfriend Sylvia from the mysterious crime boss, simply known as Mr. X. Next we need to jump two years ahead to 1986 and back to Technos of Japan. A man known as Yoshisa Kishimoto would develop a game for them known as Renegade, a title that in my opinion has influenced the beat em up genre just as much as Double Dragon itself, which means I am keen to do a deep dive video on Renegade at some point soon too. This game contains side scrolling and fighting like in Kung Fu Masters, but fighting is taken out onto the streets like in Urban Champion. This would be a further game where the game's main protagonist must take down a mob boss in order to rescue his girlfriend, slowly shaping the beat em up genre as we know it. I am not going to dig too deep when talking about this game as I have so much to say about it in the future as I feel it contributed so much to gaming overall. But one thing we have to mention today is that there are two versions of the game, one made for the Japanese and one made for the West. The Japanese version known as Niketsu Koha Kunio-kun was loosely based on Kishimoto's own life in high school where he claims he was always fighting over girls, which was paired with a bit of inspiration from Enter the Dragon as well. And then there was of course the western version known as Renegade which was artistically inspired by the Warriors. No matter what you call this game though, Renegade was still not quite the prototypical side scrolling beat em up quite yet as each level contained essentially just a large arena to fight in, but the game still was the first of its kind to offer multiplane scrolling and many of the enemy sprites we associate with beat em ups first appeared here, such as whip wielding dominatrixes and angry bikers for example. Just one year later, arriving in 1987, Technos of Japan would release another beat em up with Yoshisha Kishimoto at the helm once again, this one finally being Double Dragon itself. Double Dragon is a game that built on what the team had created with Renegade, resulting in the company creating something that was even more impressive than what came before it. 
Out of all the inclusions in this game, its most groundbreaking feature was that it allowed for two player cooperative gameplay, which is where the double in the Double Dragon title comes from, with the dragon being taken from Enter the Dragon, which made sense considering the film was a big hit in the West. The two player change in play meant that the game would be the most successful in the genre yet, shaping future beat em ups as we knew them for many years to come. In this game, the players take control of twin martial artists, Billy and Jimmy Lee, or Hammer and Spike for the radical dudes who read the supplementary material for the American arcade release of the game. Like Renegade, the plot of this game revolves around saving a girlfriend from a mob boss, Billy's love interest known as Marion. Combat in this game was the most refined yet, allowing players to perform martial arts moves using a joystick paired with three buttons, which they used for kicking, jumping and punching. Using these buttons allows players to perform moves from the most basic of attacks to throws and elbow strikes. Revolutionary double team attacks were also possible in the game, for example, one player can grab an opponent from behind, allowing the other to pummel them mercilessly. Enemies can even do this to the player too, meaning that combat must be taken part in with caution. Many other elements you would associate with the beat-em-up genre are also included within the basic mechanics. Characters have life gauges that deplete when they take hits and life can be lost if stages are not completed within a time limit. Additionally, deaths can happen if players fall down pits or holes. Rudimentary stuff now. The game was also the first ever beat em up where a player can knock a weapon out of an enemy's hands, then pick it up and use it against them. This feature was invented for Double Dragon, and there are a wide array of weapons that can be used. Another huge improvement to Renegade that came before it is that the arcade version of this game could display an incredible 384 colours on screen at once, available from a 4096 colour palette. The stunning for its time game was all possible due to the arcade hardware using several 8-bit microprocessors running in parallel, along with the multiple processors dedicated to just sound, all in all delivering one hell of an arcade experience for its time. After Marion is kidnapped at the beginning of the game, combat takes place as Billy and Jimmy begin to fight their way through the streets to save her, but being the very first cooperative beat em up, which was a groundbreaking step forward for its day, does lead to a fair bit of slowdown in Double Dragon, but this would be what you would have to expect really with a game that was the first of its kind. The game features enemy sprites that are synonymous with the genre, which of course includes the obligatory whip-wielding women, which has always confused me really as to why would they provide their service to playable protagonists completely for free. There are some large enemies in the first area, including an encounter with a large enemy near some throwable barrels. There are lots of interactive objects within this game. Players progress to a more factory-like industrial themed area, another stage aesthetic that would become associated with the genre. This area has ladders to climb and higher areas to access all in all giving the game a nice sense of physical depth. The third stage in the game seems to take place as players exit the industrial building, giving the game a feeling of continuity, leading to a woodland area where more skirmishes of enemies occur. There is a section where players must cross a damaged bridge whilst trying to take down large enemy sprites, adding to the game's challenge. Players slowly progress to a mountain range which requires the players to do a lot of climbing, whilst avoiding boulders that can be thrown by enemies. A green incredible Hulk like opponent guards the door in the mountain side at the end of the stage. Once inside the doorway players arrive in a temple like area full of booby traps to avoid that hinder stage progression. There are more enemies here than on other stages, some of which even smash through the walls located in the background. When players finally reach the end of a stage, players find Marion strung up on one of the walls. In this section, players take on wave after wave of enemies as the crime boss watches on maniacally with a machine gun from the balcony above. Eventually he comes down through the door below and he is slowly defeatable after taking a lot of hits. In a strange end to the game, rather than helping poor Marion down, the two brothers decide to fight to the death, with the winning brother getting the girl thus meaning the game ends where the winner gets the girl, but loses a brother in the process. Deep. Double Dragon is an all-time classic that changed the way that people would develop and play beat-em-ups. 
The game is the very definition of a trendsetter, but being the first cooperative game of its kind, it is both incredibly short and incredibly basic in comparison to games that would come after it. But that is the nature of the gaming beast really. The game would end up being ported to many of the most successful home platforms of its era, meaning that a Famicom slash NES port of the game was a no-brainer for Technos Japan. So this title would arrive in 1988 on the platform. In terms of this NES version, sadly the game does not offer a two-player cooperative game mode, which is outrageously ridiculous when you consider that cooperative play was the game's main selling point. Surely the game by this point should not even be called Double Dragon and instead should be referred to simply as, well, Dragon. This huge shift in gameplay would mean the game would need a whole new story too, with Jimmy being made the main protagonist and Billy becoming the game's main villain. I guess the two had a punch up at the end of the arcade game anyway, so at least this ending is slightly less depressing. It is of note that Double Dragon was only the second game that Technos developed for the NES, hence why the game was lacking in many features future NES games from the same genre would include. The game's holes meant that only two enemy sprites could appear on screen at once, and both of these enemies needed to be the same sprite but duplicated. Weapons also disappear in this version once enemies who held them are defeated, even if Jimmy is holding them. There are a few new mechanics included though to make the game more console friendly, such as the inclusion of a new RPG like levelling up system within the game, with a total of 7 skill levels to unlock. The most striking difference in this version though, aside from the graphical changes, is that the level design is very different. Some stages feature all new areas and there is a strong emphasis on platforming and evading traps. There is also a new boss at the end of the second stage. Double Dragon NES is almost a different game. Not long after the release of the NES game, the title would arrive on Sega's 8-bit competitor, the Sega Master System, with this version of the game being published by Sega and being developed by Arc System Works, the company who would go on to make the critically acclaimed Guilty Gears game and other beloved fighters. Since Sega always did what Nintendo don't, the Master System version was vastly superior to its NES counterpart, allowing up to three completely different enemy sprites to appear on screen at once, instead of just one being duplicated to two. More importantly than that, this version of the game allows for two-player cooperative play, actually meaning that this title feels like a Double Dragon game. The levels are much closer to what can be found in the arcades this time around as well. The game is still obviously not as appealing as the arcade version, but it's a brilliant effort really. By 1990, the Game Boy would get a game titled Double Dragon, which played much like the NES game, but featured stages with completely different level design once again. It's pretty much a different game entirely based off of the poor NES port, so nothing to shout home about. Of course, by the late 80s and early 90s, this was still a period in time where various micro and home computer formats occupied the homes of many European consumers. However, with the lack of a particularly dominant system, different versions of the game were made for various pieces of hardware, and the quality of each of these conversions varied. But none even came close to the arcade original, but it's worth noting that they certainly exist. By 1992, the game would finally arrive on a 16-bit home console, released as an unlicensed third-party cartridge for the Sega Mega Drive. This game on the powerful 16-bit hardware manages to fix some of the slowdown problems I mentioned with the arcade original, however the game suffers from a poor sound quality due to the cartridge only being 4 megs, a limitation that was in place due to cost-cutting measures that hindered this port overall. A game came to the Atari Lynx in 1993, published by Telegames, the publisher who were keeping the Lynx on oxygen. The game is ridiculously zoomed in though, and as a result is simply horrible to look at. This was the final conversion of the game in the classic Double Dragon era, and it's safe to say that if you are going to play this game, you are clearly best off giving the arcade version a whirl, which is playable in so many different ways today. Double Dragon may be a tad rough around the edges no matter which way we play this game, but there is no denying that its influence is literally everywhere in the beat-em-up games that would come after it. If there was no Double Dragon, there simply would be no Final Fight, Streets of Rage, Golden Axe or Konami Turtle games, or at least in the form we know them as. The title was simply that influential. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the mad story of Double Dragon, a game that defined the entire genre. 
Let me know in the comment section which beat em up you would like to see me cover next, as I am always looking to learn more about the history of this great genre on my channel. Today's subject was chosen by the wonderful people who back this channel over on Patreon, who regularly pick for me some absolutely fantastic subjects to cover on here. For just $1 a month or more, you can have a greater input over what I upload on here, and you can gain early access to every single video I upload. I would like to give a huge shout out to the brilliant patrons who continue to back this channel through the strange year that is 2020. Huge thank yous to Sebastian Vélez, Carl Johnson, The Murder of Crows, Hale Paula Lopez, Joseph Rasmick, Doug Perkins, Rowan Dinched, Evan Balder, Philip Manth, Cambo Rambo 82, Aswell Rorakai, Keith Ferguson, Dropkin Varela, Prince Knight, Mike Cullitz, Ego, Jordan Durant, TOG Driver, Angel Light 85, Alephia Swanson, Timothy W. Haskins II, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Carlos Domingos, Sponge Matt B, Glennie Glenn, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Posty XL, Michael Hall, Bubba Kitty, Ron Studd, Busty St. Clair, Langston Miller, Noob, Casey Wright, Zai, Brian Barry, Sir Lagney, Chris Marjorie, Stephen Lewis, Sarah Powell, Vlaming, Renee, Sarai, H. Al Sarai, Marvin Araliga, Chris Cool, Punky Doodster, Adrian Hannington, Bernard N. G., Marco Soto, Richard Stu Stewart, James McDonald, Jazzy Tay, Crazy Yarl, Master Jinx, Hans Christian, Time Rule Soundwave, Dan Van Dam, Adam Casting, Gregory Smarajewicz, Rick 67, Louis Viant, John Bates, David Bow, Angry Little SOB, Mike Bruno, Arnis Reinsbergs, Chris Fisk, Ivan M, Paul Elliott, Me Machine Dean, Antonio Rodriguez, Dan Barlow Jr., Craig Jenkins, Tom Elliott, RetroVersion.com, Tint Spaces, Andrew Bazanski, and all of my other patrons. Thank you all so, so much. Mwah. Virtual kisses for all. Social distancing. Ooh.